So to test out my key switch and the electrical mechanical mechanism for it, the contactless, I decided rather than build an enormous keyboard first, I'll start with a macro pad just to keep my sanity and have something I can show off right away. So I designed this last night. It took about two and a half hours. Uh, it's magnetic mount and I didn't want to make it too tall. Uh, so I needed a way to fit this in here. So I just, I stuck it in the side. You know, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna glue it in there with some silicone, you know, so I can remove it if necessary, re-glue it. But you can see it sits pretty tight, you know. I did make a minor mistake. I didn't make this little gap wide enough, so I had to file away just like, I want to say like 0 0.2, 0 0.3 millimeters. But it's pretty close, close enough anyway, that it didn't matter. And as you can see, I used took advantage of Prusa Slicer um, le uh, color change feature with my uh, multi-material printer here. So this is transparent filament, and let me get one of these WSL8 uh, 12B LEDs. So it's going to sit in there just like that, each one of these. Uh, on this one, I've rotated the um, one of the features of my parametric SCAD is you can rotate the direction of the LED wires. So I rotated it slightly so it'll sit like this, and they'll sit between each other like that. Um, I'm going to wire them all up and then shove them in there. And it'll be controlled by this Pro Trinket, which I've had for years, because um, I just wanted this one. <laughs> I wanted the Hackaday one because it looks cool. And I'm glad that I bought this one uh, ultimately, even though it was a long time ago. Uh, and it just sat unused because, you know, I just I didn't want to use up this really nice microcontroller board for some, you know, fiddly project because most of my projects are fiddly. But this one's going to be nice. Right? This one's going to look nice. And now that I'm thinking about it, I'm cutting off a bit. I'm going to make a shadow there, but. I think this looks nice with the gold pins sticking up. And let me show you how this works. Now, I made one slight mistake on the tolerances there, which is why it's slightly bent. But you know what? It's not going to matter because the way this plate sticks to the case is it's held on by magnets. So I don't really need to... I, I mean, I can just bend it, you know, bend it back. But with the switches in there... And by the way, these don't have a bottom. So there's a feature in my SCAD called the stopper. And a normal switch has that. I have one down here to show you. See that little bar that runs across the bottom there? And that bar makes it so that when you put the stem in, it snaps in. But, you know, it's a little tr tricky to stick the stem in there. Um, you get the hang of it after, you know, 20 or so. <laughs> and, but what it does is it prevents the uh, stem from falling out when you, when you push a keycap in. These I made without that to save some vertical space. Um, and instead, I'm just going to have the stem... Uh, press on the LED, the corner of the LED, because I don't think, you know, it's not going to hurt them that much. Because what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a little uh, shock absorber Ninja Flex pad here, and I'm also going to put like a 0.4 millimeter TPU layer that sits above the LEDs just in case I spill something on it to keep them safe. Not that they're particularly expensive or fragile. Um, but that should make it the whole thing very quiet. And let me show you how this works. Isn't that cool? Just snap right on there. And oh, see, see how it went through all the way? That's the point of the stopper. Uh, because it went too far, it didn't have anything to press against, so the stem basically went beyond the point of re no return. <laughs> but as long as I press it the normal distance, it'll come back. And that TPU layer should, I mean, that's the plan anyway, we'll see, right? We'll see, just like this, you know? Didn't work out, but I fixed it after the fact. We shall see. And regardless, I can always just put the keycaps on. You know, I can just take this plate off, put the keycaps on here, and just hold the bottom while I press the keycap in, and that would solve that problem too, because the keycap's really what's going to stop the um, stem from going in all the way. And as you can see, those magnets are strong enough that it pulls the plate flat, so that, you know, miscalculation with the tolerances isn't going to matter much. Uh, but this should be bright as hell. Oh, and here's another cool feature that I came up with. So I love making capacitive touch stuff. So what I was going to do is I was just going to run a wire from here to here to here to here, you know, just uh, six wires, I think it is. Yeah, six of them. And I'm just gonna, I got them at an angle because that's what they recommend for doing a touch-based slider. So the way this is going to work is I'll just pull, if I pull down with my finger, it'll scroll down the screen. It's basically, a, it's going to be a scroll, scroll wheel, you know. 
kind of feature. So I pull down and it scrolls down and I pull up. So it'll be my left hand. This will sit on the left hand, right next to my keyboard on the left. And I probably didn't need to make this as wide as I did for reference. Um, and I'll just do this, you know. I'll have, to, I'll have to stick it to the side of the keyboard somehow strongly to prevent it from sliding. Um, maybe put some CPU feet on the bottom here. But yeah, that's the plan. So I'll have this nice little left-handed scroll mechanism. And, you know, if I hold down a modifier and make it control the volume too, maybe. Or just do, you know, something like press this down, do double tap or something. And that's the plan. Uh, I'm going to wire it up today. We'll see how it goes.